بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May the peace and blessings of Allah Almighty be upon you and uh, welcome to our weekly podcast I'm here, uh, my name is Will, I'm here with Sheikh Muhammad Yaffa and we are putting on a weekly podcast answering some questions that you may have going over topics that have been sent to us so please if you're watching this on YouTube or any other uh, form of media please reach out to us with any questions that you might have we'll go over those uh, each week inshallah so today we're we're uh, going to address a topic that I've seen happen over and over and over with people who say they're spiritual so I've run into many people who say I'm a spiritual person I believe in God but I worship God in my own way. I reach out to God in, in how I reach out. I have my own form of prayer that I do, and, uh, and I feel like I, I'm, I'm uh, doing, doing okay. So why do we as Muslims believe uh, that it's not only just an individual aspect of worship, but why is it also important to have a, have a concept of group worship? With uh, to Allah, and why do we have certain methodologies that have been told to, or taught to us on how to reach uh, Allah in prayer? Um, so this concept of individualism in worship ver- versus uh, becoming a member of a larger faith community, and what uh, what do we as Muslims believe? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Jazakallah khairan for introducing the topic. It's um, really a very uh, interesting one and um, the idea that people say uh, I am spiritual, uh, I don't belong to an organized religion, I worship the way I, I feel. And uh, some people can say that logically, right? If if Allah is there and I am supposed to connect to Him, and uh, so why can't do it? Why can't I do it my own way? So um, I think f- we have to look at it from different angles. Because if you are a Muslim, there is one one way to think about it. If you are a non-Muslim, <coughs> also there is a way of thinking about it. If you are a Muslim, you ha- you don't have the you don't have the right to ask the question, <laughs> because first of all, we believe in Allah. We believe in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we believe in the Quran, and uh, and all of these tell us that coming together is the way Allah subhanahu wa taala prescribes it. So if you subscribe to a certain way of life, then you go according to that certain way of life. If everybody brings their own way in it, then there is no subscription to that certain that way of life. Then everybody can just do what they want. So as Muslims, we believe first of all that anything that Allah tells us to do is the right thing and it's for our benefit. And um, anything that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells us is what Allah wants us to know. So we worship in, in congregation because of that, first and foremost. So because al-Islam one is Islam. Islam is submission. Just like you submit to anything that you believe in, when we believe in Islam, we submit. That's the first thing. Then we can ask some questions. There is nothing wrong with asking the question itself. I said you don't have the right to, to ask the question. I don't mean you don't have the right to know. I just mean like if you subscribe, you, you're subscribing with your whole heart, so you are in. Um, but we know that worshiping together in Islam um, if you look at all the, let's say, the ritual, the formal, the daily, the yearly, and the lifetime worship that have been prescribed, they are all meant to bring people together and for people to really look at one another in the eye or touch one another and feel the same and feel equal and care for one another. So it's in our benefit to worship in in congregation. For example, when you go to salah, when you go to, to the salah, to the prayer in the masjid, it's different from when you go to people's workplaces. When you go to people's workplaces, everybody has their designation, they have their positions, they have their offices, they have their places, they have their money, they dress how they want, they stand where they want, they have control. When you come to the masjid, everybody is equal. Everybody is equal. You don't differentiate between the president and the king and the pauper and the poor person and the doctor and the, and the janitor. Everybody lines up equally, shoulder sh- to shoulder, foot to foot, facing one direction, doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. And the one who is leading, it's not by their money, it's not by their fame, it's, not by, it's by what they, the way they read the Quran or how much they know. And that qualifies them to lead the prayer. And they are not a spiritual figure that can tell us what is not in the book. They are not divine. 
they are just leading for that moment. And if they are not there, we don't have to wait for them. We put another person in, in front. So that worship in itself, it tells us the importance of coming together. This has been the scenarios where people have talked about the community and they have, they have provided for community. They have seen people who are suffering right in the mosque. You look into your brother or your sister's eye and you say, oh, this person might need my questions and then you find oh might me need my help so it's for our benefit and it it's the ultimate form of equality the same thing with fasting together right we all come it brings us as as unified people and then we can feel together what it means to feel the pangs of starvation and what it means to feel happy when you break your fast we all are spiritually one versus if you fast in january i fast in february Right, and the same thing when you say um, we go to Hajj, everybody dressed the same, looks the same, says the same thing. So it has its social benefits for us. But like I said, as Muslim, we don't even need that to obey Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So that is the first point I will say from a Muslim uh, perspective. Now, from a non-Muslim or somebody who is a, who is questioning, we can say that this is. Prayer is about the spirit, definitely, spirituality. Who knows the spirit the best? The one who created the it. The one who created it, right? And uh, who has the right to put the manual as to what will feed the spirit? The one who created it. The one who created it. it. You, let's take the car as an example. Many, many countries create cars today. Right, Germ Germ Germans create the Mercedes Benz, the Americans, you know, General Motors, and uh, you know, Japanese cars, Honda, Toyota. And still, nobody will buy their car and say, you know, I put in this car the kind of oil that I feel because it's my car, I own it. Or I will put the gas wherever I want, it's mm -hmm. my business. Mm -hmm. Not if you want the car to run. Mm -hmm. If you want the car to run, you are going to go buy the manual that the car manufacturer put in the, in the car. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions, you refer to the manual. And if you really can read your manual very well, sometimes you can avoid the mechanic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So the same thing, if the one who makes the car knows the car better and provides the manual, we know almost absolutely nothing, very little about the spirit. Mm -hmm. We all have spirit. But what is the spirit? Not many people can tell you, they, they, can, they can talk about it for five minutes, mm -hmm. what the spirit is. I don't know the essence of the spirit. The one who created the spirit says, if you want to reach, if you want to be spiritual, you have to listen to me. Because mm -hmm. I created that spirit, I will give you the manual as to what will make that spirit become elevated. If everybody chooses the way they want to treat their spirit, it's like, we're treating something that we don't even understand individually just because it's in us. That is like, because I have bought the car, I can put water, fluids where I want, put gas where I want, put oil where I want. It just wouldn't work. So it makes no sense to really claim that because I am an individual, I can do my spirituality individually because you have very little clue as to what your spirit is. MashaAllah. Right? So there's a danger. In the, I always say there's a danger in the statement I, yeah. like when you when we say I, I do this, I do that, I decide how yeah. I'm going to yeah. reach God, yeah. uh, I decide the methodology yeah. in in my prayer. Yeah. It, what happens is the ego it's it starts to become in com competition with the Creator, and as we know, Allah is is one, uniquely one, um, and and only Allah is uniquely one. Everything else in existence is in existence in relation to somebody else or something else or is in need of something else we need food and we need drink we need uh when we're small we need someone to to clean us we need someone to feed us we need we need we're always in constant need of an of another human being when we break those bonds and we start to think that i am uh self-sufficient i decide then we're in competition with the creator who is self-sustaining and has and is in has no need of of the creation, uh, which is dangerous. That's why I always say that uh, you know I always believe that in in Islam, uh, the spirituality is we we have individual areas where we worship individually, but we have collective worship as well, uh, just to keep us in understanding that we are we are in need of of each other, and 
also as human beings, we're either takers or givers. I think every moment of our life, we're either taking something or giving something. And to think that I'm worshiping God in my own way and I'm doing well, but ignoring someone else that may have a struggle in worship. What, what If we go to the masjid, there may be somebody else that's struggling with worship that will find strength with us to help him and he becomes stronger. Then there may be times in our life where we're weak and worship ourselves. When, and when we go to where the other people are worshiping, we'll find strength with them and they'll help us. So uh, the prophet, he taught us, peace be upon him, that our faith goes up and down in our life. And part of Islam is, 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 is the help that others can give us in our relationship with God. Right. When we're down, somebody else can pick us up. And when, and when we're up, maybe we can help pick somebody else up. That's right. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. And, 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 and not to say people cannot worship individually. There is individual worship for sure. But that is also like, again, let's take the car analogy. analogy. You can go and wipe your car further. You can test your oil. You can, you know, you can do the other things. But the basis, you have to do them according to the manual. The manual won't tell you, you know, wipe it with this, with this kind of cloth. This kind of cloth is what you recommend. But sometimes you have discretion. The same thing with <coughs> worship. Once you've had your general worship with, with the congregation, you always can do extra worship to elevate your own self, to lift your own spirit further. But it's not to draw the perimeters of your, of your worship. And as human beings, we are also obeying rules. In society, we obey all kinds of rules, and the rules are universal. They are for everyone, and sometimes they are congregational. Um, we holidays are taken by the days that are designated. If everybody takes their holidays on their own days that mm -hmm. they feel it won't work. Mm -hmm. So just like we follow rules in our social, in our human relationship, we, it, is, it is in fact more befitting that we follow rules of the one who created us and created the system that we tend to uh, want to obey. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, wa Allah wa Rasul, obey, the, obey Allah and obey the Prophet. Obey Allah and follow the Prophet. In Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening chapter, um, we, we read that, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, uh, praises belong to Allah, the Lord, the Creator, the 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 one who created and sustains everything, right? So I know people say, okay, we believe he created and sustains, right? But then you have to, there is only one dua in Surah Al-Fatiha. We worship you alone. We. We worship you alone and we seek help from you and guide us, guide us to the right path in doing that. So it's not guide me. It's not guide me. And, and, and it's not I worship you it's Allah. It's not I worship you Allah. And, and if you want guidance of how to worship and how to treat your spirit, you have to go to the manual that was given to us through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is based on the Quran. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Jazakallah khairan. May Allah bless all of you out there listening and increase us in understanding and help us in our relationship with our Creator and with other human beings. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.